This might be a hot take, but for my money, books are the best resource you can use to become a better designer. Look, I went to design school, I've been to dozens of conferences, I've taken more online learning courses than I can count, and yet I've learned more from books than from anywhere else. But the children love the books. The only problem is that there's millions of books out there, so it can be hard to know which ones are worth your time and your money. That's why in today's video, I'm breaking down my top 10 must-read books for graphic designers that have helped change my life and my career. Let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome to Artful Ruckus. For those of you that are new here, my name is Tom Munns. I'm an art director and brand designer with over 15 years of experience and this channel is all about helping creatives just like you take your craft, careers, and confidence to the next level. People keep asking me what are the best books for graphic design, so I wanted to put together this video outlining some of my new favorites, as well as some of the classic must-reads. I'll be sure to put links to all the books I talk about in the description in case you want to pick any of them up. Using those links does help the channel, so I really appreciate any support there. And without further ado, let's get into my top picks. Okay, so my first recommendation is a book called The Creative Act, A Way of Being by Rick Rubin. Now you probably know Rick Rubin as a music executive and a music producer. He founded Def Jam Records. He's worked with people like the Beastie Boys and Run DMC and Metallica. So this book isn't specifically about design, but it is about creativity. And I found it extremely relevant to what we do. I thought it was really interesting the way that he makes parallels between music artists and writers and painters and designers, and basically says that creativity in whatever form is fundamentally the same thing. If I had to sum the book up into one word, it would be empowering. While Ruben talks about a lot of things in the creative act, one of the main things he touches on is that it's so important for us to put our art and our creations and our creativity out into the world. I find that so many creatives, myself included, are perfectionists. We end up procrastinating, we end up not sharing things just because we want everything to be perfect. But in the book, Ruben argues that imperfections are what make creativity so special. Our unique viewpoints, our unique perspective, our flaws, our process. This is all the special sauce, the superpowers that make us us, right? One of my favorite things about this book is that it's incredibly easy to read. So it's all broken down into bite-sized pieces of information that are easy to digest. And so he's covering very lofty ideas, but the way it's written makes it very easy to comprehend. Being a music executive and producer, naturally a lot of Ruben's stories in this book are relating to the music field, but I actually found it really inspiring to hear about all these big name artists that were apprehensive about putting out their work and then when they did it, a lot of that work ended up being some of their biggest hits that we all know and love. So it really drives home the idea that creativity needs to be shared and we can't control the results, we can only control the process. Reading this book is actually one of the big reasons I finally got around to starting this YouTube channel. I had been putting it off for a while and just procrastinating, but reading this book gave me the permission I needed to just put it out there. So I can attest that it's both valuable and actionable. So definitely recommend picking this one up. Next up, we have the Win Without Pitching Manifesto by Blair Enns. If you're a designer in any discipline that deals with clients on a daily basis, this book is packed with valuable information. In the book, Enns outlines 12 proclamations for designers that's all about empowering you to charge what you're worth, stop doing spec work, and respect your time and your skill set. Whether you're a freelance designer or an agency owner, I'm confident that you'll change some of your business practices after you read this book. It's all about earning more money, wasting less time, and feeling more confident when you're working with clients. Speaking of clients, if you've been dealing with bad clients and you'd like to change them into great clients, I highly recommend checking out this video up above. So again, if you work with clients in any capacity as a designer, I highly recommend checking out the Win Without Pitching Manifesto by Blair Enns. So next up, we have another new release. This just came out at the end of 2023. It's called Field Good Productivity by Ali Abdal. So for those of you that don't know Ali Abdal, he's a famous YouTuber. He's one of the most followed productivity experts in the world. And this book is all about being more productive and feeling better while doing it. One thing I love about the book is that it basically is trashing hustle culture, right? So the whole Gary V grind it out mindset, work 24 seven, 
that's not healthy and it's not sustainable. And so Ali Abdal goes into research and talks about ways that you can still be productive without killing yourself doing it. It's incredibly well written. It's really easy to digest. So everything is just like these quick chapters of bite-sized information that you can apply to your work that day. So that's really nice. And everything is backed up with research. So it's not just him making these wild claims. He actually has tried and tested every approach that he has. And he also backs them up with scientific research, psychiatrists weighing in and things like that. So it's nice knowing that this stuff actually works, that it's not just someone making baseless claims, but it's all based on facts and the way that the human brain works. So the book is incredibly easy to read. He's broken everything down into bite-sized chunks of information, which is really nice. I love how actionable this book is with what Abdal calls experiments. So he basically gives you ways to apply each philosophy to your next project to see if it works for you individually. So I really like that he's not just giving you this list of solutions and saying everything's gonna work, but he's letting you kind of tailor a program to yourself to see what's most effective for you. One of the main things that Abdal touches on in this book that really affected me is burnout. At the time when I read it, I was experiencing pretty intense burnout and I didn't really know how to solve it. But Abdal mentions that there's actually multiple types of burnout, one of them being misalignment burnout. I had never heard of this, but it was actually exactly what I was experiencing. And so reading about it, seeing his solutions allowed me to actually address that. And I immediately felt more energized than I had in a very long time. So again, I can personally attest the effectiveness of this book. Definitely recommend picking it up. All right, so this next one, it's big, it's orange. <laughs> It's Logo Modernism. So this is a great coffee table book, not in that you would put it on your coffee table, but that it actually is the size of a coffee table. <laughs> okay, yes, it's huge, but in all seriousness, this is actually a really great book. Um, it is packed with thousands of logos from the 40s through the 80s. I think it's over 6,000 logos. Um, so it is an absolutely great reference guide when you're just looking for inspiration. You wanna see what's been done before. What did the masters of the past do to create these beautiful logo marks? The book is printed incredibly well. Um, so I just love looking through this and seeing all the different logos and logo types. Another beautiful thing about it is it's broken down into different categories. So it's broken down by style. It's broken down even by letter for like typographic logos. It's broken down by industry. So it makes it really easy to search and find exactly what you're looking for, even though there's so many logos in the book. The book also kicks off with a really nice history of logos, kind of starting at the beginning and then getting into the 40s and talking about the history and the advancements that were made up through the 80s. So that's great too that it has all that context. This is definitely one of those books that I could just sit down and read and look through for hours and hours and just geek out over logos. So if that sounds like you, if you're a brand designer, just interested in branding, definitely recommend picking up Logo Modernism. All right, next up, we have my favorite branding book of all time. It's a book called The Brand Gap by Marty Newmeyer. So what I love about this book is that Newmeyer takes these kind of lofty, ambiguous terms like branding, and he makes them very concrete and very easy to understand. He basically breaks down what a brand is, why it matters, why it's valuable, and what you can do to affect its perception, which is incredibly important, right? One of the shocking things is how short the book is for how much value is packed into its pages. Again, he's just taking these really complex ideas about branding and just simplifying them and defining them into terms that seem so easy and they make so much sense, but before I read this book, I couldn't put them into words. So if you're a designer that deals with branding in any sense, whether that's brand strategy or brand identities or brand messaging, definitely, definitely pick this book up. I also recommend Neumeier's other books. He has The Brand Flip as well as Zag and some others. So definitely look into those as well. So this next recommendation is actually my favorite book of all time, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. So I actually don't even have the physical book on hand right now because I loaned it out to a friend, but it was written in 1936. 
but the advice inside is timeless. It's every bit as relevant today. It's all about working and interacting with others, whether that's in your personal life or at work. Carnegie put together a really great guide as far as how to interact with other people, how to communicate effectively, how to lead others, and how to speak to people during uncomfortable circumstances. So while this is another book that's not really in the design realm, I found it really valuable to me as an art director when it comes to leading my team, and even if I wasn't a team leader, just interacting with my other teammates, right? One of the concepts that Carnegie keeps driving home is all about empathy. It's about putting yourself into the other person's shoes and understanding what they're thinking, because that makes communication so much easier. As a testament to the effectiveness of this book, the day after I finished reading it, I got into a fender bender, the guy didn't want to admit fault or pay for the incident and the damage, but I used all the things that I had learned to appeal to his nobler senses. Lo and behold, he actually ended up paying for my fender bender. So this $15 book paid for itself a hundred times over almost immediately. So for anyone working with a team or leading a team, definitely recommend picking up How to Win Friends and Influence People. All right, everyone, I hope you're enjoying the recommendations so far. If you are, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more design content. As a small content creator, every engagement helps, so I really appreciate the support there. I've still got a few more book recommendations for you, so let's get back to it. All right, next up, we have one of my favorite books of all time about typography. It's Thinking with Type by Ellen Lepton. So this book is essentially a typography 101 college course put into book form. From the anatomy of type, to type terminology, to layout, to typefaces and fonts, this book covers all of the bases that you need to know to get started with great typography. This is another beautifully printed book that's jam-packed full of examples of great type, whether that's posters or print pieces or digital. So not only does it cover all of the basics, but it's something I find myself going back to even 15 years into my career. So the one I have here is actually the first edition because I'm old, but Ellen Lupton just released the third edition very recently, so definitely recommend picking it up. Next up on my list of must-read books for graphic design is Creative Strategy and the Business of Design by Douglas Davis. So I love this book because it's all about bridging the gap between the design skills you learn in school and the business skills you need to be successful in the real world. This is something you've probably heard me harping on ad nauseum in my other videos, but design without strategy is not impactful. So this book gives you a strategic framework you can use to figure out how to make your creative get actual business ROI. And so Davis does a great job of covering a variety of topics surrounding that basic idea from brand strategy to brand positioning to the actual creative, and so it's a really nice overview of how to make your work actionable in a business sense. So with this being such an important topic, I love that Davis covers it from a variety of angles. So he looks at brand strategy, positioning, and data analysis, and really breaks down how all these different areas can be applied to the strategic framework. So if you wanna be seen as more than just a pixel pusher, you wanna get a seat at the table, definitely pick up creative strategy in the business of design and start being seen as a creative strategic partner. All right, this next one is a really fun autobiographical book by Aaron Droplin. It's called Pretty Much Everything. Uh, it's really beautifully printed. It's beautiful to look at. Tons of logos, tons of color, as you can see here. But what I really love about it is that it kind of shows the journey of his career. So I think a lot of the times junior designers think that you go to college, you become a designer, you then become a senior designer, art director, creative director, whatever the case may be. But Aaron Droplin, being so autobiographical and honest in this book, shows you that it's not always just a straight path like that, and everyone's path can be different. So I think that's one of the biggest takeaways I had from this book, is that everyone can be successful in their own way. As you can tell from the title, pretty much everything, the book is also packed with pretty much all of his work from his entire career. So again, it's really well printed. It is a great coffee table book. It's fun to just sit there and kind of page through it and look at all the different logo designs he's done. Um, I love his approach to work of just being very simple um, and utilitarian and inspired by kind of old school designers. So 
Um, really love looking through it. He's also just a really funny guy. It's a super engaging read, so I definitely recommend picking it up for a slice of life from a great graphic designer. And finally, we have a book that you might have seen before. It's Start With Why by Simon Sinek. So again, this book is not a specifically design-focused book, but I think everything in it is directly applicable to the design process. So Start With Why, as the name suggests, is all about not taking things at face value. It's all about discovering the underlying reasoning as to why something needs to happen or why it works the way that it does. I think this is especially important to designers because I think a lot of the times we can kind of be seen as pixel pushers. We're just creating deliverables. Whereas really we should be seen as strategic partners by solving real business problems, which is exactly what Start With Why is all about. As designers, we don't just wanna create things that look good, we wanna create things that are timeless and that solve business problems. One example of putting Simon Sinek's approach to use for design would be, instead of sending a potential client a quick questionnaire about their project, instead setting up a discovery call to really do a deep dive and figure out what's driving their business problems. If you're able to uncover the why of a business problem or the why of the company that you're working with, you're gonna have such a valuable piece of information that can drive all of your creative deliverables from that point onwards and act as a North Star for everything that you're doing. And outside of applying to what I learned in Start With Why to the creative process, it also heavily focuses on leadership and working in teams. And so that's obviously really important as creatives as well. So whether you're a team leader or a graphic designer, definitely recommend picking up Start With Why to shift your mindset and start thinking more strategically. All right, everyone, that's gonna wrap up my top 10 must-read books for graphic designers. I'm confident that picking up any of the books I've talked about here today will help you level up your craft and your career. Did I miss any of your favorites? If so, I'd love to hear them, so be sure to leave your recommendations in the comments. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now go out there and make a ruckus. Okay.